Hey guys, Phil Smy here. It's 2020. Why am I still using Ruby on Rails? Hi, Phil Smy, Zonmaster.com. You know, back maybe, gosh, it was 2004, 5, 6, something like that. I can't really remember. A long time ago, I started using Ruby and Ruby on Rails right around version 1, maybe even version 0.9. Not quite sure of that. And I've been using it ever since. It's not the only thing I use to, work, to write software, but it's my main tool of choice. And like the language and the framework, I've kept up to date with all of the changes. And in this video, I want to talk about why I'm still using Ruby on Rails in 2020. As you probably know, a lot of people are down on Ruby on Rails, and I'm trying to look at why this actually is, because it kind of makes no sense to me. And I, I'm, so I want to talk about the three main arguments against it. The first is slow performance. People have this idea that Ruby and Rails are slow, when in fact, Benchmarked, they're about the same as other interpreted languages. Okay, C++ is faster, but not a lot of people are writing websites only in C++. What happens, I think, a lot is that Rails gives you so much that as a developer, um, you're not really writing good code. That's the bottom line. I think a lot of it is usually comes down to crappy code. You know, some big companies are running with Ruby on Rails, so it, it must be performant. It must be enough performance, so there's no, no excuse for you. Problem number two that people talk about is scalability. And I think this all comes about from when Twitter, way back when, said that Ruby and Rails couldn't scale, so they were going to switch. Now, Zonmaster, my company, we have database tables with hundreds of millions of rows and 20,000 signed up customers. We're not a huge company, but we're a big enough company. And what I'm saying is that Ruby on Rails is performant enough for us, has scaled for us vertically, vertically this way and horizontally. If uh, Maybe if you're at the size of Twitter, okay, I'll forgive you if you switch. But up until then, I don't really think you have a scalability problem. The third problem is kind of funny, it's just fashion. I think Rails now, is kind of mature, you know, and maybe boring. And maybe it's only old farts like me that are, are still using it because it's not hip and cool. But, you know, when it's used by experienced developers who are well versed in building apps, I think Ruby on Rails maturity combined with the tools and the libraries and the community support makes it you know, makes it worthwhile, more worthwhile than other languages, and that's why I've stuck with it. So let's look at the, those are the kind of things against it. Let's look at the things I think for it uh, and what it's used for. It's great for making MVPs, minimal viable, minimum viable products. I have a new startup called Podchuck, which is an AI-backed text-to-speech and uh, rich audio platform. So again, software as a service. The proof of concept there went from an idea to a working piece of software taking beta testers in two weeks. And I don't know of many other platforms that you could do that on except for Rails. Ironically, uh, social networking apps are commonly done using Ruby on Rails because it's proven to support heavy traffic. So it's, you know, it's contradictory, contradictory thing. If you, it's of course is used for e-commerce. Think about Shopify. Shopify sits on top of Ruby on Rails and Ruby. And uh, I think that's kind of the modern example of that there is no scalability issue, you know. Shopify takes the money, no problem. Anything that sits on top of a complex database structure, you know, you look at GitHub, uh, Bloomberg News, and, and my own example of Zonmaster. You know, our database is quite complicated, interrelational, and I think we could only really do that in Ruby without writing some pretty gnarly SQL code. 
Finally, one of the big things I think that Ruby on Rails has going for it is the huge community support. And, you know, you have people like Amazon, Stripe, Elasticsearch, Chartkick, and millions of others providing native Ruby gems. You know, you just can't you get that in another language. Just plug in and go and connect to these services. So Rails 6 is out, and it's been out for a little bit of a while. It's got some interesting features. Uh, you know, uh, I use the stimulus JavaScript uh, framework on top of that, which gives kind of dynamic page loading and, you know, uh, ability to update page without refreshing. You have this amazing action mailbox, which treats incoming mails like controller actions. You know, so finally you can do everything post uh, sending out emails and pulling in emails and responding to things through automation all inside of Ruby on Rails. It's got action text, which is a built-in rich text editor. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, but it's there and it's a lot better than anything else I've seen built into a framework. And finally, action cable, which is kind of like a, let's say a Node.js, uh, the ability to publish and subscribe and subscribe to, uh, to publish feeds from a web page again to do dynamic page updating and things like this it's a dynamic exciting language i don't know why i'm here being an evangelist i just i love the software it makes my job so much easier so much faster so much more creative that's why i'm still with ruby on rails in 2020. oh one other thing if you go to indeed.com which is like a, some big job search thing the top paying language based development jobs on average are Ruby. Ruby, when I looked the other day, the average job offer on for that was 121,000 a year. Uh, Python came second. So there were no other, even C++ and things like this, no language that had a higher average payout than that. So if that's not a good enough reason for you, I don't know what is. Hope this has been of help. A little bit of a development ramble. See you soon.